Okay, so let's go over a couple of common commands in Motion Genesis. And the first one's going to be Newtonian frame. And what that does is it creates four things. One is it creates unit vectors NX and Y and Z, the three unit vectors. And it creates the origin uh, NO. Um, and then we'll do another one here. Rigid frame C uh, creates a reference frame with CX, CY, CZ unit vectors and a reference uh, origin called CO. Now the difference between a, a Newtonian reference frame and a rigid reference frame is a Newtonian reference frame can't have accelerations. So a, a Newtonian reference frame can't be rotating, for example, we'd have accelerations. So we could have a rigid frame C where there would be an angular velocity of C and N, for example. Uh, and, and actually C0 or CO, the origin could have an acceleration, but NO couldn't have any acceleration. It could be translating, but it can't be accelerating. Another command I'll use is uh, as constants. I'll say constant AX. I'm cutting and pasting so that you don't have to watch me type. Um, as constant AX, so that will give me a constant uh, named AX. And I can make more than one declaration on a single line. So I can say constant AX, or I can say, for example, constant F1, F2. And this last one here is B2 and B3. So I can actually say B1 through 8, or 2 through 7, whatever I want. So constant is uh, obviously for constants. We'll get to variables in, in, in a, a later uh, video. OK, so I'm going to define my first vector. I'm going to say that A equals AX times NX. So that's a very simple little vector. And you see when I hit Enter, it, it it, uh, all these other ones were declarations. Now this is actually also a declaration, but it actually uh, requires uh, Motion Genesis to do some calculations, um, and so it spits back to me what it thinks A is. Um, and it tries to capitalize unit vectors and make all the scalars lowercase, just the way it is. Motion Genesis likes it. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to define another vector B, which is B2CY plus B3CZ, and you'll see that uh, makes the, the lowercase versus uppercase things going on. So it makes the, uh, the B2 and B3 lowercase, just the way it likes it. Uh, and now I'll do a, a final third vector here. So I'll do an F vector, which is F1CX plus F2CY. And again, all three, it's fit back to me what it thinks these vectors are. OK, so I'm going to do some commands here. So I'm going to say A plus B. That's just a vector addition. Um, there's nothing special about this A plus B. I'm just naming it so we know what the answer is. I could have named it junk or goobly gop or whatever I wanted. Um, I'm just saying that this is to remind us later that this is A plus B. So if I add these two vectors together, you should, say, you should see that it's AX NX plus B2 CY plus B3 CZ. And of course, it does it exactly. Um, now, it is in a mixed basis. If I had told it, which I haven't yet, but if I told it how the C reference frame is uh, positioned in, in relative to the N, for example, if I know the, the rotation between those two, the, the, uh, the rotation matrix between those two, it could actually uh, express this all in one basis. But since I haven't told it what the rotation matrix is between those, it can't do it. It has to leave it in mixed basis. OK, then I'll do another one, sum. I'm just giving, I'm giving the, the, nothing special about the, the, the vector name sum. It's just a vector name I made up. I'm going to do A plus B minus F just to show you you can do uh, you know, multiple steps. So I've got um, using one of the re earlier results in my actual vector, just showing it's a simple vector addition again. And it goes ahead and it does that exactly. So it does to take the, the, the negative of this vector and add it to the other ones. And of course, you can do vector things like 10 plus b. Now, what's different about this command is, is I'm not using the equal sign. So it's going to give me back an answer. It says this is the result, um, but it doesn't have like an arrow, but it's just telling me this result. So if I want to ask it something, for example, I just want to know 10 plus b, what it is currently, um, I, it's, it's going to tell me what 10, 10 times b is, but I can't use that result. I can't say result equals something. Um, so this is just basically asking it uh, a question, what is 10 times b? Um, but I can't use it like I did here where I had a plus b. I could use that result in a later command. I could use a plus b down here. But here if I say 10 times b, well, I can't use that because I didn't assign it to anything. There's no left-hand side of the equation. So let's do another one here. We're going to find the last two, a uh, very common one. So we have vector addition subtraction. Of course, we have dot products. So the command there we're going to use is dot. So the actual command so is, is b dot f. Now I can dot b and f because they're both in c. I can't dot a and b. It'll complain because it doesn't know how the c and the n uh, reference frames are related to each other because I didn't define a rotation matrix. But I can do uh, b and f because those are in the same, the same uh, uh, reference frame. Same bases. So b.f, and of course it spits it out. And again, this name b.f isn't anything particular. I just named it that so we'd understand that it was b.f. Um, and if you do b.f, you can see that it's really um, uh, the only common term in there is, is cy. So it's going to be b2 times f2. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say uh, b cross f. Again, it's, a, it's, a, it's another vector um, operate, common vector operation. So here, of course, this is a vector. This is a scalar, so it's a vector. So you need the caret b.f. Um, and it'll, b cross f, and then of course it'll, it'll do the cross product again, um, 
because it's the C, this, these are both in this, this C basis. Um, so the last command I'm going to show you is the save. So I can say save, and I'll name this, uh, making it up, I'll name it junk. So I can say junk.txt, and what it's going to do is going to save all of my uh, input files here. So if I bring this, this junk.txt over, uh, you'll see that it has a new reference frame, all the commands I just used, including this one here, uh, which was just a request, basically. I didn't do assignment, but it still was a command. It got a line number. Um, and then I could basically edit this and then rerun it. So if I, if I actually, um, uh, let's say I did want to do b cross f, um, you know, minus 10. And that was the edit I did. So I would save that. For example, I can come here and I can say, I'll clear this one. That's a common command. It's clear. And I can say run uh, junk.txt. And it'll do the exactly the same thing because now I've, I've executed, um, it'll, it'll execute all these commands uh, just like it was a script file. So it's essentially the save, so essentially the save.txt is a way of of taking all your code and making it into a, a script file, which we talked about in another video. So the last command is, is, the, is the junk.all, and that will save all the inputs and outputs. So junk.all contains uh, the line number. This is a result file. So it contains the inputs and it contains the outputs, and they're all line numbered just as they were in the actual uh, code. Um, so here's the actual, for example, here's the edit we made where we, we, we did the minus 10 at the end. Um, so this is the type of thing you might turn in for homework, for example, if you're trying to show us the result of all your calculations, where is the script file where we're showing you the input code. Now sometimes it's easier just to show the, sometimes it's easier to show the input code, um, and sometimes it's easier to show the output code, it just depends on what, what you're being asked for.